put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Mission Impossible Rogue Nation movie review. Ethan and his team are targeted by the syndicate and the syndicate targeted by them. The syndicate being a rogue international spy organization which on paper doesn't even exist. No no spy organization has ever been able to prove that the syndicate exists. And the... Yeah, I, I think that's basically what I should say about the plot. Now, I have not watched the original show. I've only watched the movies. And to just briefly state my view on the different ones. First one, a nice classic kind of spy thriller with Brenda Palma's spectacular visual flair. The, you know, the one problem it has is that the climax gets really Hollywood. And the second one is awful, but at least it does have woo action going for it, but it really shows that, you know, Woo action needs a good script, and you know, Face Off is, yeah, probably the only good American movie he's made. But I am glad to see that Ethan has conquered his crippling fear of detonators, which he clearly had in that movie. And it's also the only of these to not add a regular team member, although I suppose we'll see if. Ilsa from this one will actually show up again. The third one is Bad JJ, and Bad JJ is pointless chronological jumps, unanswered mysteries, screwing with canon. Bad JJ is small screen vision on a big screen budget. Bad JJ is like good JJ until you realize that you've been duped. And the fourth one is just dumb fun. Now, the, yeah, as, as usual, as, or say, as usual, the team is betrayed or tricked or in some way or another work unauthorized in the film. Now, this has the, the benefit of some very competent bad guys, which, really makes, you know, you can really tell that these guys are also spies. This is, you know, these are people who know what they're doing. Now, this also has a very interesting villain. You really want to see this guy. You know, it, it, he reminds me some of the, well, let's see. Philip Seymour Hoffman, rest in peace, from the third movie. You know, the one of the few really good things about that movie was just how intelligent and intimidating he was. And this one very much has that kind of intelligence. And you really, you don't know exactly what he's planning. But he really thought it through. He, he has a plan that really... Yeah, and, and it's, you genuinely wonder how on earth they're going to outsmart him. How are they going to be able to stop him? Now, this is the first of the movies where every member of the team is veteran of at least one other film before it. And Ethan Hunt still in charge of the team, expert agent. Excuse me, Luther is a bit of a tech expert, which 
I still don't quite understand why Benji joined. In, in the third one, it seemed like he was just the guy who still works in the office. But I'm still not entirely certain why his role couldn't have been dealt with by Luther. Whatever. I like Simon Pegg. Love Simon Pegg. And the... Yeah. And, and Ving Rhames is just always awesome. And yeah, he's awesome in this as well. That brings us to Benji also tech experts. Seriously, they're like both really good hackers or something, anyway. And Ilsa Faust, She-Wolf of the SS. She's a double agent and really mysterious character. There's this sense that she may very well betray them. You know, there's a bit of the The Dark Knight Rises Catwoman going on there and yeah, she really you never know if you could trust her, and it's it's done really nicely. And the, you know, she's been compared to, you know, yeah, the, you know, they, they say in interviews that she's like the female Ethan Hunt, and yeah, to, to an extent, yeah, and, you know, graceful but goes in for the kill, very cat-like, yeah. And the and this is the first thing I see Rebecca Ferguson in, but she's awesome in this, so I'd like to see her in more. And you know, she isn't. You know, the the actress is Swedish, and she has that accent. And in the, you know, yeah, I'm I'm not sure I should really say anything about her country of origin and and such in the film now and you know we of course get some gratuitous you know excuse me sexy scenes with her which is also excuse me which is also a reason to think excuse me that she might not return next time because each of these has a new hot chick so yeah but yeah, seriously, the one of the first things we see her, you, you you see that you know yellow dress in the trailers with you know where it's technically you know it technically reaches the floor, but it's like there are like slits or whatever you call it, and yeah, you know, yeah, un unlike Drew Carey, I have not memorized a you know, lingerie catalog, but, but yeah, one of the first things you see is her walking in that dress, and the camera has, you know, her posterior right there in the middle of the screen, and the shot lasts for, like, several seconds, and, you know, this, this is, you know, it's just establishing she's walking in there, you know, it could have been done just a few seconds, it it lingers, so, yeah, and to be fair, some of it is plot related, but, yeah, they, they definitely, they knew they had a hot chick, and they really wanted to show her off. Now, and then we have Brant, the analyst, and, you know, just barely ready for field work, and he has a lot of scenes with Alec Baldwin's character, the new minister and he you know he's trying to take the IMF apart you know you see him in like you know there's a senate here and you see that you know some in the trailer and yeah he's trying to take them down there's you know he's arguing that the you know yeah they're they're a relic they you know they just caused a lot of mayhem and yeah and yeah, you know the the two play off each other well, and you know it's it's always nice when you can say the Senate hearing scenes in the film are good. Now, yeah, and and the 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 villain Lane, <laughs> not quite villain, but Lane. 
he is when I when I first saw the you know the the name I felt like I, I know that guy and then I looked up she's you now he's he's Fifield from Prometheus but then again he's also Santino from Deliver Us from Evil so yeah good hands by good hands I mean that we are in good hands not that the actor has good hands because I wouldn't know the movie is just about two hours pretty much like you know two hours five minutes the opening scene you know it's the thing you see in the trailers with you know um, Tom on the outside of the plane it's a little annoying because the the team are basically like arguing with each other and nagging and yeah now the first new character we meet in this literally just fawns over Ethan's you know many achievements to be fair it does turn out that she's then killed and it's you know a sympathy thing you know oh but she was so young and she was you know in all of him maybe she could she could have been a good agent or something or other and yeah I mean this one he didn't even have time to train so yeah there is at least that it's is not completely gratuitous but yeah like like with with Ilsa it's 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 close and I can confirm that the bad guy does not spend all of his screen time pouting now this follows up on four which I thought was nice and you know th these kinda tend to act like the others didn't so much happen like the 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 characters return but they don't you know when when they're suddenly in a completely different movie because each of these movies has some different you know different flavor to them each of them kind of feel like they're just they exist by themselves not so much in relation to the other and yeah this one actually you know the senate hearing they're talking about stuff that happens in the fourth movie and yeah, and there's an early line that, I think it's Baldwin, who says that the results that the IMF achieve are largely by luck. And I think he is confusing luck with the favor of the screenwriter, but he's close. Now, Ethan has basically gone off the grid at the start, and he's not even, like, particularly in contact with the others, and at one point we see the place that like that that a place that he had been staying and he has like this wall of you know conspiracy theory stuff it it even has stuff that really sounds like i think one of the things was like world bank in crisis or something and i'm like okay now yeah now you're getting really close to like yeah now, there's this ongoing thing of Ilsa having to take off her shoes in order to run or fight or the like. And there are various exotic locations. Now, the, the, the new minister also... You know, in in addition to trying to shutting down the IMF, he sends the Special Activities Division after them. I, Special Activities Division, that's just sad. Now. One thing that is a little unfortunate is that Alec Baldwin, there's a chunk of the film where he's just not really in it, and yeah, you know, you kind of missed his presence. He was a really, you know, yeah, he, he, it was a lot of fun when he was on screen.
there is one, at least one, surprise face mask reveal in this. And no, it wasn't the one that the trailers gave away. Now. And that appears to be, yeah. This movie is a lot of fun. You really get into it. I, you know, from the trailers and such, I thought it, it looks okay. I, you know, I mostly watched it just because, you know, I'm a completist. I've watched every single other film in the series. And yeah, you know, but yeah, I gotta admit, I mean, excuse me, there's that, that opening scene. But you know there is still some good in the opening scene but yeah right after that it really got to be yeah it it's it's a really entertaining film from start to finish and the the full theater i watched it in you know everybody was enjoying it everybody laughed at the right times and you know gasped at the, the right times and such. This is only the third film that Christopher McQuarrie directs and it's the first one I see and apparently going by the credits, the critics, the other two are just okay. This one is great. Now there's a you know a number of scenes and stunts in this were yeah you know Tom Cruise does insane stunts by himself because he hates the idea of his director sleeping soundly in the night now the trailers do give away some outcomes of scenes but there's a lot that they didn't give away at all so yeah and there are some really cool gadgets. The the actions and settings are very nicely varied. You know, you've got fights, shootouts, chases on foot and on and by vehicle, and some very nice, you know, surprising outcomes. And there's this when one of the first things, one of the first places we see Tom is in that cell that we see, you know, also in the trailer where. Ilsa comes in and helps free him. When, you know, before she frees him, this guy comes in and, you know, basically the idea is he's going to be interrogated. And Ilsa walks in and she draws out, she's got like these syringes and these small little glass jars of, you know, and, and, you know, you, Picture in my okay, so it's like truth serum or you know just yeah something that would make him talk you know maybe it causes pain you know one syringe causes pain one takes away pain you know something like that but then in comes Vinta who is apparently nicknamed the Bone Doctor. And he has, like, this set of, like, you know, he's got, it, it looks like Dexter's set of knives, you know, or, or something that you would find in, like, a, what's it called? And, you know, someone performing autopsies or something. It, and, yeah, you know, he grabs this thing that, you know, looks, looks like a, it could saw bone, some something like that and you know then they escape but he's you know he keeps coming he's he's there for more of the film and there's this you know there's this ongoing tension between him and Ilsa who pretends like she didn't help you know help Tom get free even get free from the prison so you know, she she has to earn the trust of Lane, and yeah, you know, the Bone Doctor is is there, and you know, we see it. We we can tell that sooner or later there is going to be a 
you know, a duel between, yeah, and it's, you know, you, you really look forward to it, and it's well worth the wait. Now, among the settings are Morocco and the UK. Now, and yeah, as with you know, the others, there's at least one perfect face mask. I don't recall if Ghost Protocol had one, but that one might be, you know, that, that would still make that one the only one. And I also don't, there, there wasn't a scene of Ethan lowering himself, you know, suspended above, you know, over a flat surface, which I'm also not sure was in Ghost Protocol, so at least there, you know, going against some of these tropes because frankly that one never needed to be a trope it was awesome in the first movie even in the second movie it was pretty ridiculous and yes there's Tom Cruise on a motorcycle and there's Tom Cruise running a lot This has a main MacGuffin, though I'm not going to give away what it is, similar to how the first one had the knock list with the, you know, the names of the undercover agents matched to the, you know, their, their fake identities, and, you know, the second one had the Chimera virus, the third one had the rabbit's foot. Now... And this has some really cool spy scenarios, you know, there are, you know, they, they might sneak in and steal something, they'll go and disable something, they might be going in to kill or, you know, protect a certain target. And much like in the second one, someone might shoot someone or something that they're trying to save. Although in this one it does make sense. And yeah, as I've already gone into a little bit, there is some stroking of the ego of Tom Cruise. Now this is a PG-13, but it doesn't really distract by that. You don't feel like there should have really been blood there. We really should have seen that something. Now, the climax is great, and the it is impressive, or maybe just sad that it's this series has been going on for almost twenty years by now, and it's still got the same lead actor yeah now unlike the the second and third movie this does not have a laptop you know an explosion near a laptop and then they spend some time fixing it for you know as a plot point and this one also maintains that Ethan does not want to have to kill anyone, you know, anyone innocent, and he will prefer, you know, insane acrobatic stuff. And, yeah. I've reviewed other parts of this franchise, the links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.